Hello everybody and welcome back to Us Lives, Us Vibes, and A Dies movie reviews. Y'all, first of all, before we say anything, excuse the the cold I have going on here. I have been nursing it back to health, and while I have been doing that, I have been binging old horror films. And don't ask me why, but I was like, I still have been recuperating from part one and two of the movie we're discussing today. And I was finally just like, at my worst moment, I was like, just go ahead and watch it. It can't get worse than this, right? So that's what I did. So today we're going to be talking about my thoughts, my feelings, my trauma on the human centipede part three. So this is how this is going to go, okay? First of all, I've got some notes over here on my computer that I made about it, so I'll be referencing those as we go. So what I'm going to do is after we talk about it, whatever, I'm going to kind of like rate them for you, I guess. Like if a gun was held to my head and I was forced to tell you which of these to watch first, I'll tell you what I think about that. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about just some of the actors and people like that in the film. Taking inspiration from the Human Centipede films, the warden of a notorious and troubled prison looks to create a 500 person human centipede as a solution to his problems. This again is written and directed by Tom Six and he also does a cameo in this. There are familiar faces in this one again. Dieter Lasser is back as a crazed prison warden, and Lawrence R. Harvey is back as Dwight Butler, the prison's accountant, slash the warden's lapdog. So this film actually has more of a plot line than the others did, which I don't really think helps the situation, right? Uh, so in a nutshell, in addition to like what we just went over, so the crazed prison warden, uh, he, you know, it's all, he like wants to be respected by, you know, all the prisoners and da 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 da. And so he's always coming up with like these kind of like crazy, psychotic, completely inappropriate ways of punishing them to make them fall in line, but it never works, right? So his biggest thing is like, you know, how can we, you know, sit here and, you know, reform? It's not really even about reforming prisoners, it's about them respecting him and whatever. So all throughout the whole film, his little lap dog, it's in here trying to suggest to him the human centipede. Like, this would be the most cost-effective way, and da-da-da-da-da, yada, yada, yada. And any time, like, Dieter, the actor, you know, gets ready to torture a prisoner, the other dude is like, well, think about the medical cost, and yada, yada, yada. So you know where this is going eventually. The prison warden is like, yeah, we'll do the human centipede. And so they do that, and yada, yada, yada. So that's, in a nutshell, the plot line. So here's my thing with so-called plot line, right? So all the films are pretty much on the basis of how does the centipede work? How are they going to do this? Yada, yada, yada. Well, by part three, we already know, right? We know, we know the shtick, okay? So honestly, the human centipede seems like an afterthought in this one, which I ain't all that, you know, I, that's not a problem with me. And we'll talk more about that when we get to that. Now, what takes front seat in this installment to me is the crazy prison warden, along with his crazy antics that he does. So let's take a few moments and talk about some of the oh my god moments in the film, because Honestly, with this one, I was just kind of like, I get where they're coming, but again, remind, remember, I was like in bed sick, so I was like, huh? And, and if you've seen the first two, ain't nothing going to shock you in this one, okay? Okay, so there is a castration scene in this film, okay? It's horrible. It's absolutely disgusting. Um, it, most any guy watching this will be crossing their legs while doing so and being like, oh my god. So, yeah, there's that. Um, it's one of his torture, one of the prison warden's torture things. Now, they take it a step further where he has them cooked and he eats them. And I was like, oh my god, you are kidding me. So, there's that. Let's talk about another oh my god scene. Now, on that whole thing right there, the prisoner that he castrated, at one point, and you realize it's a dream sequence after the fact, right? But during this dream sequence, the prisoner, the warden's having like a nightmare of the prisoners taking over and cornering him and all this. And so the dude who he castrated is like, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, do what I told you I was gonna do to you, which is, like, essentially take his manhood, right? If you know what I'm saying. And he's like, but I'm not gonna use what's already there. I'm gonna make me a new hole in you. And he does so with a shank in his side. And then he proceeds to violate him in that hole. And I'm like, you are kidding me. But the whole time, and it's sad that I have to even think this for, like, 
continuity purposes, but I'm like, but wait, how is he doing that? Didn't he castrate him earlier? And the things that this man is saying that he's about to do to finish the act, is that possible anymore without the family jewels? And then I was like, Paul, I can't believe I have this conversation with myself. And then you realize that the warden is dreaming and it's a nightmare and that you're just like, oh my God. But yeah, they subject us to that, right? Now, a whole other cringe factor to this is Daisy, the secretary to the warden. Y'all, he is so inappropriate with her and the things that he does and violates her throughout this. She's a pretty blonde girl. We learn that, you know, basically she's doing stuff so that her dad got out of prison or whatever. So he is doing completely grotesque things to her throughout this, violating her in ways and whatnot. Okay, so there's one part where he has her pleasuring him in front of the accountant while the accountant's like trying to eat or something and you're like, really? This is so bad. So then later in the film, when the prisoners kind of like escape at one point, they, number one, they get into the offices and he pushes her out there and they attack her. And then you see her later in the hospital and this is when they've kind of decided they're going to do the centipede thing, right? And her face is all battered and stuff. And the warden is turned on by it and violates her again. And you're just like, oh, this is a level of depravity I've yet to see, okay? This is bad, right? This is really bad. So let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about the actual centipede, right, in this one. So like I said, it kind of takes back seat. You're subjected to like, I don't know how long, like oh, more than half the movie of like, almost like this character development of the warden. Most of the time he's been screaming and yelling. I can't understand a word he's saying. So I'm sitting here like, now mind you, my sinuses are clogged up and stuff. So I'm just like, I don't know what he's saying. The times that I could understand him, it was like very dark comedy stuff. And it was kind of like, okay, really? Like absurd. So it was funny in that way. To me, overall, this is like trying to go into the field of dark comedy. Almost like the director 100% was like, I'm not making another one, so we are literally making fun of the series this time. So that was the vibe that I got from this. And like I said, Tom Six is in this one. We see the same method that the other two have followed or the sequel did, where we see them referring to the movie and, oh, here's this, you know, and, oh, is this really medically accurate? We can do this to the prisoners. That whole thing. So it's like a tongue-in-cheek installment so that makes it a little bit better to swallow but nonetheless there's still like complete depravity in this and whatnot so when they decide that they are going to do the human centipede first of all they have a doctor that works at the hospital but he doesn't have a license but the warden lets him work there because obviously he'll do whatever so they devise a way that they're going to make this chain right and they're just like oh well, we'll do this and we'll do it. the same way we've seen in the other two and so they're doing it under a tent and so on and so forth now there is this one point where they're doing all that, yada, 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 and the guy, like, the, the person above them is, I think it's Julia Roberts' brother. It's an actor with the last name of Roberts. I don't have it right here in front of me. I'll put a picture of him up, which I was just like, why is he in this? Um, but you'll recognize his face, and you're just literally like, what? So, and Tebow is in it, too. He's one of the prisoners, and I was like, even for him, I was like, dude. Like, I hope they paid you well for this. Um, I hope his salary was, like, way more than, like, whatever. Because I love him. He's awesome. Uh, but I was like, the, to me, this movie was beneath him, right? So, they make the centipede. The dude comes. And, yeah, there's this entire line of these people. And they're all feeding off of it. You know, feeding off of each other the way they do or whatever. But it's not graphic in the way, like... You know what's going on, it's disgusting, but we've been there, we've seen it, so it's not like this focus on it, if that makes sense. But then you learn that he has put Daisy into the centipede, and you're just like, oh my god. I mean, this prison warden is just awful, right? Um, so, there's that. So then, basically, you know, the movie ends with... First of all, the prison director or whatever, he's come to fire these two dudes, the warden and his lap dog. But after he leaves, he comes back and he's like, yeah, you know what? This is the way to go. This will save money. This is the next evolution. And I'm sure in reality, if prisons were set up in the way that you went and you were put into a human centipede for your sentence, nobody would commit any crimes. A period. End of damn story. I mean, can you think of something more horrendous, right? So there's that. Here's my thing with this film and all the other ones. And this is kind of going to also go into my whole, you know, 
which ones did you watch, whatever. First of all, there's no point to these movies, right? Like, they are literally just grindhouse, like, smut, okay? So, here's how I rate them. Part one was like a, oh my god, have you heard about this movie, yada, 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 and you watch it, and you're horrified psychologically. It does have gross scenes, but again, you don't really 100% see it, but w less is more, kind of like Jaws. Nonetheless, you do see this stuff, and it's so horrendous, right? So then you're like, well, how can a sequel top this, right? And it does because it's so grotesque. It is so horrifying. It is so disgusting and vile. Like, with the horror of it, it's just vile, right? So then you have to say, where can you go for part three? There's really nowhere else you can go. And so I felt like what Tom did is he made a joke out of it. You know what I mean? And he did stuff that was more politically incorrect. I think it was tagline that. It's like 100% politically incorrect. And I mean, absolutely, right? So... Because there wasn't anywhere else to really go with it. I can't imagine he would make another one because there's really no point to it. I can see somebody spinning off on it. And actually, one thing he did, I forgot to say this. And they have set it up for this. So when they were doing the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the chains. For people who had life sentences or death sentences, they cut their arms and legs off and put them into a caterpillar sequence. So they basically were just going to sit there for, until they died, I guess feeding off of one another in this caterpillar sequence. I can see somebody maybe doing that, but like, what's the point, right? So here's my thing. If if somebody was to say, I haven't seen this, this series, what would I watch? I would say, watch part one because it will disturb you. It's horrible. It's pointless. And it's absolutely horrendous. Psychologically, all that type of stuff. If somebody was like, oh, I'm into like really gory crap, and da, 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 I would be like, hands down, watch part two. You don't need to watch part one to get, just watch part two. It will turn your stomach in multiple ways. I really wouldn't even suggest watching part three because it, it's so, it's more of like a dark comedy, but it's so grotesque in some of the things that they do, like with Daisy the castration, like, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, dudes, like, this, okay. So, <clears throat> there's that. Now, I have done little review takes on the other two or whatever. So, I finally made it through this. Now, I started looking at some of these other titles that people have been suggesting along these lines. A Siberian movie, I think it's called, which I don't know if I can handle that. And then Cannibal Holocaust, which I want to try that one at least, but people were saying, oh, God, they do stuff to animals. I'm like, hey. <laughs> so I don't know if I can handle it or not, right? But I'm definitely going to have to, like, decompress from this one or whatever. So, anyways, again, if my suggestion, if you want to watch any of the series, watch part one. Okay? And that's it. That's my final answer. There you go. So, anyways, let me know what y'all thought of the movie. If you watched it, if you've seen it, if you're going to watch it, whatever. Um, I'm just happy to be done with the series. Let me know any other horrifying movies that y'all might want me to watch and get my reaction to it. And I'll see what I can do about it. Now, until my next movie binge, we'll meet back here.